Hi everyone. <laughs> it's good to be here back on my channel. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back on the channel because I want to talk about some things with you. I want to speak on some revelation that the Lord has been giving me while I've been away. I'll be honest, I love spending time with Jesus. I love that more than anything. I love spending time with the Lord. It's my favorite thing to do. I admit that it is an honor to be able to work for the Lord. But I have to be honest that my most treasured time is the time when I'm actually spending time with the Lord, learning from Him. And I believe that learning from God is something that we do in patience. It's something that we do... It's something that can't be rushed. Spending time with God, learning His voice, hearing His voice for the current season that you're in is something that, especially in the world that we live in today where everything is so fast-paced and so accessible, it seems easier to access those things of the world. But those things lead to destruction. And time spent with God only leads to life and to truth and to abundance. And so I put my treasures in those things in spending time with God, learning his kingdom, exploring his kingdom, and really receiving the revelation of truth that he has for his children. Um, but now that I've expressed to you why I haven't been before the camera, I'll let you know why I am here. More recently, the Lord has been pressing on my heart to speak again and to allow the revelations that he's been giving to me to be revealed to those who, who don't have it and who may not understand it and or who may not understand what God is doing today. That's why I'm here today to speak to you about your current season, where you may be right now, where God wants to take his people, what God wants his people to understand, and how to move forward in truth, in God's truth, in the truth of the gospel for you and for your life and for your family. So... There are a couple places that I'm going to pull from. Um, I'm a person who speaks from experience. Um, I don't speak so much from what I've learned only. I speak from revelation and from experience and from spirit and truth. The Bible says that the true worshipers of God will worship in spirit and in truth. So it's important as a child of God that we are both spiritual and we are both rooted and grounded in truth. When you're rooted and grounded in truth and you're spiritual, there's a grace that's upon you that you're able to reveal these truths that God wants to give us today in a way that is um, able to be received for those who need it. So I'm going to speak from experience and I'm also going to speak from the Bible. Um, today I want to talk about your gifting 
I want to talk about repentance and I want to talk about the new wine and the new revelation. That's not a new revelation because it's always been, but the revelation that we should be walking in today. Okay. If you have been walking with the Lord, if you have been following this channel, I want to encourage you that God has not forgotten about his children. He's not slow to carry out his promises for you. He takes his time, the Bible says, so that all can come to repentance. Because the gifting of God, it says in Romans chapter 11, that the gifts of God are without repentance. That means that you don't have to repent to be called of God, to be gifted of God. You don't have to repent for those things. When God calls you and when he gifts you, he does not take away that calling or those gifts. God does not move backwards in the sense that he is not an Indian giver. <laughs> when he gives, he gives for you to have, for you to keep. There is no catch. There is nothing that you need to do in order for you to receive the gift of God. If you have the gift of God, it's yours. He's given it to you. So whatever that gift may be, there are several gifts of the Spirit. So I'm not going to name them all today because I don't want to deviate too much. But if you know what I'm talking about, then you know that if you have a gift of the Spirit, it is yours. It belongs to you. What is important to understand about the gift of God and stewarding your gift with honor is that although the gifts are without repentance, repentance is necessary in order to walk with the giftings, with integrity, and with honor. The way that God would want you to steward his gift. Because the gift was given to you to be used to build up the body of Christ. So it's used to for other people. In order for your heart to be correct with God, in order for your heart to be in the right place with God, a lifestyle of repentance is necessary in order for you to operate in your gift and the relationship with God not be compromised. Now, this is something that the body of Christ, I believe, is struggling with. There are many gifted, gifted children of God. And... It's difficult to watch the body of Christ be torn down by each other um, because repentance is not at the forefront. And when I say repentance and I, I say a lifestyle of repentance, I mean walking with the Lord so closely that your heart is tender towards those who need mercy your heart is tender towards those who need love and your heart is right towards those who are experiencing judgment because judgment is not God's first line of, of or way of getting his children back to him. It is necessary at times for his children to, to turn around and come back to him. But during those times as the body of Christ operating today, we should be sensitive to those who are going through judgment 
because we're all brothers and sisters experiencing the same thing at the same time in different circumstances. So if your brother or your sister is experiencing judgment, the only way for you to operate in your gift and either encourage them into the things of the Lord. I'm in the, the office and because of this door, sometimes there's flies, but <laughs> in order for you to truly operate in your gift and encourage your brother or your sister or help them along their journey even while they're being judged you have to be able to have a right heart toward them if you're not able to have a right heart toward them then there is something that you're not understanding that God is trying to say to you so there could be some time that you need to step away from that relationship or that situation so that you can understand with God what is the best way for me to encourage my brother or my sister while they're walking through this difficult circumstance or difficult situation or difficult season what is the best way for me to be there for them you're asking God this in order for that to happen and you're not judging them. When you think about Job and when he went through his testing, his three friends judged him according to their own thoughts. They thought that because Job was being tested and tried, that God was somehow punishing him or that God was somehow um, sending wrath upon him for something that he has done and you will have people that argue that today I don't believe that that's a correct understanding it, when we have crucified Christ who is already risen he's already risen he's already in heaven so now judgment is coming for a different reason and once you understand what that reason is, then you're able to encourage your brother or your sister. Once judgment comes from the Lord, best to believe if you're a child of God, you know why that judgment is there. God is calling you closer to him. If God is calling you closer to him and you're actually walking closer to him, then you, you are finding out, even if it's bit by bit, why judgment has come. So for a brother or a sister to come and say, I believe that God is judging you because you're not right in this area or you're not doing this right. It is not speaking from revelation because that's that's a revelation that you may have gotten from God initially. But what happened after that? Did you go back to God and reason with him and say, OK, God, if my brother or my sister is being judged in this way, how can I help them? What can I do? to be a help to them, to be there for them. What are they not understanding that I do understand with you? I'm not walking through that specific judgment. You may be going through your own situation, but if you're not walking through that specific judgment, God, how can I help my brother or my sister? This is why the scriptures talk about repentance and the gifts and the callings of God. So where the church is today, there is a fine line between what is the new covenant and what is the old covenant. And oftentimes we see the church splitting because the old covenant wants to battle with the new covenant rather than allowing the new covenant to live where in place of where the old covenant was. So I'm going to read Hebrews 8, chapter 8 to you. It says, Christ is our high priest. It says, here is the main point. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship, that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. And since every high priest is required to offer gifts and sacrifices, our high priest, who is Jesus, must make an offering too. 
if he were here on earth, he would not even be a priest since there already are priests who offer the gifts required by the law. They serve in a system of worship that is only a copy, a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. So God told Moses to build the tabernacle according to what it looks like in heaven. So when we're seeing these churches and we're seeing them living in the old covenant that is a copy of what's in heaven, it's not our, our right to judge them because they're operating according to what God told Moses to do. So in their eyes, they're not wrong. They're just misunderstanding the new covenant that has come. So it says, But now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. For he is the one who mediates for us as a far better covenant with God based on better promises. If the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it. But when God found fault with the people, he said, this is important. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. It says they did not remain faithful to my covenant. So when God brought the, the Israelites out of Egypt, they didn't remain faithful to him. And how often does this happen to us where God delivers us from something and there's this grand deliverance? And we don't remain faithful to the call or we don't remain. And your calling is different. Your calling is different than your office and is different than your gifting. So you can remain faithful to a gift, but not to the call of God. What calls you to the Lord? What calls you to him every day? The Bible says to pray without ceasing. What is it that's calling you to pray without ceasing? So the Israelites got delivered, but they didn't remain faithful to the Lord. So he turned his back on them. It says, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people and they will not need to teach their neighbors nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. This is the new covenant. The new covenant is where we walk with a mindset that Christ has already been crucified. He's already been raised from the dead. And he walks with us every single day, teaching us and guiding us through the Holy Spirit by faith. Even if you can't see him there, even if you struggle to recognize that he's with you, you're fighting by faith to remember that he's there even when it doesn't feel like it. So that you don't go out searching for a God that's standing right next to you or searching for a God in a place where he doesn't exist anymore because they're operating in the old covenant. If you recognize that God is with you, then you'll be able to take the gospel as the new covenant with you wherever you go. And you'll be able to spread that love and that message with people who are suffering, with people who are struggling, with people who are operating in the old covenant and don't know why God has left them and he's not blessing them in a current season. You'll be able to say, I know that God is with me, but the only way you can experience this is if you take the time to recognize that Christ is with you in your private time. If you take the time to recognize and to meditate and to cry out to the Lord and to call on him until that recognition comes to your own brain. If he says you will know the Lord 
He says, they will be my people and I will be their God. They will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives. It says, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. So when we're speaking of a place that we're going, we're speaking of a place that's in the future that says there will be no hurt. There will be no sadness. There will be no sickness. You have to recognize that that place already exists. This is a place that you're invited into. Healing is the children's bread. So you're invited into this place where there is no sickness, where there is no hurt, where there is no pain. But in order for you to be to have access to that place, you have to believe it by faith. You have to receive it by faith. You have to be willing to receive it by faith. You have to be willing to surrender to say, God, I may not be able to see you. I may not be able to feel you, but I believe in my mind and in my heart that you're with me. I believe in my mind and in my heart that you are that you are my my father and that you are walking with me every day. So I'm going to take my time to acknowledge you. I'm going to take my time to experience you and to look for you and to seek and to continue to seek until God recognizes the authenticity of your heart. God is looking for hearts. He's not looking for minds. He's looking for hearts that are correct. He's looking for hearts that are right when they're seeking him. And then he may return to you the confirmation that you need to remember and to recognize that he's that he is there and that he's always been there. So it goes on to say when God speaks of a new covenant, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. So everybody's looking for this grand destruction and these are glimpses of things. Even the revelations that we get are glimpses of things that have happened and that are soon coming. So when we speak of a destruction, it very, it, it very well may be in the physical sense that everyone, that everyone thinks. But I dare to believe that when he's speaking of the first one being obsolete, it means that you're thinking the old way that you used to think, the old way that we used to worship, the old way that we used to honor God, the old way that we used to think about God and speak to God is gone and obsolete and done and already destroyed. It was destroyed when Jesus was crucified. That old way, that old covenant was destroyed when Christ was crucified. When he rose again, and you know from this book that everything that he needed to do was already done. All of it has already been done. So right now, today, he already walks with you. He's already in your midst, waiting for you to acknowledge him, waiting for you to call out to him and to experience his presence, experience his kingdom, experience his holy angels, experience the ones who have been looking after you this entire time. Many of you have been feeling alone. Many of you have been feeling like nobody understands me, but yet you walk this earth of destruction. This, word, this earth without the grace of God would be complete and total and utter destruction. The only thing keeping us is the grace and the mercy and the kingdom of God that lives in Christ resurrected. It's the only thing keeping us alive. It's the only thing keeping you and I breathing. It's the only thing keeping our souls connected to the kingdom of God. Is that Christ has already risen. He's already alive. He's already living and breathing. It takes for you to say, I deny who I used to be. I deny what I used to think, Lord. 
and I reach out to you and I hold on to you, even if I don't know what that looks like yet, but each day I will wake up and I will walk with you in honor and in truth as far as I know it. And I will search this word and I will search the spirit looking for you. The Bible says to take it by force. Sometimes that means that you're going to have to war through the spirit. It's one thing to be spiritual. It's another thing to be rooted in Christ. Sometimes we have to war in the spirit in order to get through all of the, the, the spiritual realm that is active and to get to Christ. It is an active war. The spiritual realm is very active, more active than you can see with your natural eye. But yet, God gives us the grace to find him, even though we can't see it. And once you find him and that veil is torn and your spiritual eyes are opened even more because your deliverance continues to happen. That's why it's a calling. He continues to call out to you. Today, you may experience him on a new level and tomorrow he will call out to you again. It's a calling and you have to answer the call each and every day you wake up, you answer the call. You say, Lord, I'm here. I'm a willing and available vessel, open and available to be used by you and only you. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. What do you want from me today as your servant? First, to be a servant of God, to be called of God, then to be a servant of God. And the further you walk with him, the more grace you will receive. Yes, trials will come, but you'll be so filled with his grace that when the trial comes, it will feel like it just it just won't feel the same. It won't feel like total destruction. It won't feel like you'll be walking through this fire knowing that God is with you with this strength that surpasses all understanding, a peace that surpasses all understanding is for you. Is for you today, is for you tomorrow, is for you into the everlasting. So I want to pray with you, and then I'm going to end this video. So Father, in the precious name and spirit of Jesus Christ, I thank you on today for being holy, for being the one true God that we can lean on, and we can rely on. Father, we experience you through denying ourselves. And so we lift ourselves before you, God, denying access to any other realm and to any other operating force in the spirit that is not the Holy One. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we glorify you and we magnify your name that you would give even more grace to the people watching this video. Father, you have called us a holy nation you have called us your children. You have called us righteous. You call us holy because you are holy. So for your name's sake, Father, cleanse your children on today. Cleanse their minds of unrighteousness. Cleanse their hearts of impurities, God. Root out every demonic force that is coming against the nature and the love that you bring. Father God, we lift you above every 
other spiritual being. Because you are the highest God. You are the most holy God. And because of that, we can trust in you. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our hearts. We trust you with our minds. We have the mind of Christ because that's what you give us. We can think, we can speak, we can breathe, we can be and have our being in you because you give us grace each and every day. So I thank you for each and every individual watching this video, Father God. Be with them in their coming and in their going. Those who have heavy hearts, Father God, I lift them before you. Transform their hearts. Transform their minds to know you on another level. To seek you on another level. And to find you on another level to be rooted and secured in who you are and who they are in your kingdom. I speak healing to their bodies. I speak healing to their minds. I speak healing to their hearts. May you be glorified in them, God, even more. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> mm. Take time to just sit in the glory and in the presence of the Lord. You will find that there is no other feeling, there is no other, the, the word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's something that you must experience for yourself and it's something that you must continue to experience. Seek after him more seek after him and he will make your way straight he will make your path straight he will make your mind clear he will give you everything that you need everything that you need is rooted in him in jesus name so i thank you for watching this video if this blessed you or helped you leave a comment below and that's it for today